All right, perfect. So, and I'm going to share my screen. Perfect. Just let me know you can see everything and you can hear everything good. Yep, we're good. All right, perfect. All right, well, thank you so much for joining me today. Let me just get into the slideshow. All right, here we go. Awesome. So welcome to our refresh for 2023. Welcome to our our one of our most popular workshops that we're doing is just uh, seeing how you can make that home of yours or an apartment of yours looking beautiful on the budget because yes I can assure you everything could be done and today we are so happy to present to you our updated version for next year and just sharing with you some new trends that are coming up new colors so that way it can help you perhaps you may be spending your your a month of December getting ready for the holidays or maybe thinking about what you're going to accomplish next year, making some plans. So we hope that some of these ideas are also going to be helpful to you. My name is Olga St. Pierre. For those of you that are new and joining me, I am actually a real estate agent by trade. And having these workshops and sharing this information to you in our community is one of my passions. Uh, just a little bit about what we do. We have been working with our clients primarily in New Jersey and Pennsylvania for the last 14 years. And our team mission is to be there alongside you with every life cycle that you have as one door closes, another door or window usually opens. So we help you become homeowners from the beginning and we stay with you throughout your life cycles. And that's what I truly love because at this point we're now helping kids of our clients and other family members, and we're helping them achieve their dreams of home ownership as they move through their life journey. And of course, once you become homeowners, you know it doesn't end there. We all have to maintain our most important investment that we have. So that's why we're here for you. And these workshops are designed to help you be a responsible and sustainable homeowner. Now, just because we work in just the two states does not mean that we don't have connections to help you move anywhere in Northern America. So United States and Canada, and there are there's expansion that is going on to other countries around the world. So please let us know how we can help you make your dreams come true. And our concierge service, think of us as your virtual yellow pages. If you need any contractor recommendations, if you need someone to help you declutter, if you need just some muscle to help you move things around to get things moving into your home as you get ready for the new year, I'm actually very much big on that. That's where we can come in and help you. So let us know if we can help you and make recommendations. And that is absolutely free of charge to you. So let's get cracking. So what we see all the time on social media, we see these ideas, we see these beautiful homes, and a lot of times we think that they are going to cost a lot of money. And the truth is, is that what I've been sharing in this workshop for the last few years is the fact that you don't need to have a lot of money. A lot of the times you can actually work with what you have to transform your home into your own get away into your own place that you truly love and enjoy. So today, I want to share with you the new trends that are coming up next year, some new colors, some new changes that we have noticed that you're probably going to see next year as well. And then we're going to get into some projects that you can do easily on the budget, something that you can accomplish in one day, one weekend, and some other projects that are going to give you the most return on your money but may take you a little bit longer than a weekend. So we have some actual before and after results as well. So one of the things that I always bring up and, and I want you to kind of be aware of is why is it important to be in the loop? And it's not just because you you know, you say, well, God, you know, I'm not going to be selling my house. I don't really need to know what's happening. And that's not entirely correct. What we have come to find out is sometimes life happens and life steps in and says, you know what, 
you got a new job and it's an amazing new opportunity and you might have to make a move. And what's important to understand is just to be in the loop to, to know what are some of the things that current buyers might be looking for in the home. And since this is this, all of us have our home that we live in. If you own it, it is the biggest investment that we have. And all of us want to make sure that if we do have to make a move, how do we maximize the investment that you have so that we can take the proceeds from the sale of our home and then go somewhere else and decide on the best way of reinvesting that money. And at the same time, I don't know about you, however, the home that I'm in, I have been here since 2005, and I know that the updates that I have made back then and the color choices that I've made back then were for my uh, one daughter who was an infant at the time, and now my both of my kids are in high school. So the color choices are going to be different, and frankly, my own taste and preferences have changed, and I think you can agree with that, that throughout time, as we become more mature, our preferences, our views change. So it's just nice to know what is in right now so that way you can decide if these trends is what resonates with you. So as you have noticed, the remodeling costs have gone dramatic, dramatically up in the last couple of years. And this is a question that I get quite often. Do you think that the uh, costs are going to go down in 2023. And what I can tell you is that they have shut up dramatically. Uh, I'm talking to my clients on a regular basis and I'm asking them, are you doing any renovations? What are you seeing when you are actually investing your money into your home? And the costs have gone up quite significantly. And as you can see in this chart, they have gone up maybe a little bit, they maybe started to, like, for example, the cost of lumber has stabilized, right? If you're doing some of the renovations that involve buying wood, maybe doing some addition or renovation inside, yet we're not seeing it quite uh, yet. You know, usually things tend to go up pretty quickly, yet when if we're thinking about and hoping for them to go down, they go down a lot slower. So we will see. We'll see what things are going to bring in the first quarter. And of course, I'm going to keep you posted. I usually keep you posted uh, with some of these changes every month and what's happening in the real estate industry as well as in our community through my monthly coffee chats. So you are welcome to join or just look them up on my YouTube channel. Uh, we, put, we, we have them in the beginning of every month. So 2023 trends. So Natural elements that have come into our lives for a couple a couple years ago are still in. It's more neutral colors as well as uh, natural elements like marble and wicker and cane are still in. What we're also seeing are statement pieces for like lamps. And think of that as an easy idea for you to have a color pop in any room, right? If you have natural colors and neutral everything, you may want to have a pop of color that maybe speaks to you this year. Maybe you pick a color of your choice as something to kind of signify your year, right? So it could be red or it could be blue, and then you can use that color as your accent pieces, for example, for lamps, for pillows, for blankets, or maybe for curtains to dress up your rooms. Uh, wallpapers coming back. I have seen really some creative uses for wallpaper in um, bathrooms. I've seen people use them as backsplashes, and they can be because wallpaper can be washable as well. Accent chairs, textured walls, that's kind of uh, fluctuating from the wallpaper trend. Arches and curves are in. Think furniture, right? In the furniture where we're having some curved sofas, some interesting looking chairs, and also interesting shapes for pillows and colors. As you will see, it's very interesting in terms of the trends, how different companies pick their colors for the year. They're kind of all over the place. They always are, but it's interesting to see which colors each company kind of gravitates towards. A uh, couple of things for goodbyes are traditional layouts and then also matching sets. It's interesting to see how people are trying to get creative and have more variety and more pops of color and shapes. And minimalism, although it's somewhere here, it's we are seeing more mid-century and art deco trends. So it's interesting. And of course, thrift shopping has been very much in in the last few years. And... Um, 
I have seen some really interesting finds with clients that have uh, gone thrift shopping. And as you know, we have quite a few places around us that have some really interesting things. So let's talk about a couple of things on what we can accomplish in, in a weekend, right? Whether it's a one day or maybe it's a couple of weekends, okay? So just have some sites, some um, ideas. So number one, I always start with painting because in today, today's world, with today's technology, you can pretty much paint just about anything. And when we're talking about painting, I always suggest to you start with a clean slate blank, something that's neutral. It could be neutral grays, neutral beiges, neutral whites, right? And these colors that I have here for you are from the Benjamin Moore family. They, they have been trendy for the last few years, which tells you what? That means that these colors are just timeless okay lighter colors brighten the rooms and they make it look larger so if you were to do something with the kitchens i actually had this conversation yesterday with a client of mine she's renovating a small condo and she wasn't sure which direction to go and i know exactly the size of her kitchen because i've sold other condos in that building and i told her julia go white go white because you can never go wrong it is the timeless color and it's going to go on to make the room look a lot larger than what it is you can't do anything with the space that you have physically but you can create more space visually with color so let's look at what the colors of the year are for some of the brands that you know and you can easily get access to so bear has decided this year to go very much neutral so it's called blank canvas right so you're talking about literally say hey they said hey take this color which is this creamy white and go to town and see what you can do with it in terms of using it as your starting point for your project i love it uh here's some other things that they have suggested they said okay blank canvas is your starting point and here's what you can do with that color lots of things in different directions if you wanted to have uh, accent walls you have some suggestions here on the left hand side and then on the right you can see some other more modern suggestions as well that will work really well with their color of the year benjamin moore color of the year is called the raspberry blush very interesting color very kind of it's kind of like coral red with a mix a little bit of i think cream in it and i love it as a choice of uh, wall accent i really do you can actually paint furniture with that color you can even do backsplash you can do in cabinetry with that color sherman williams color of the year they decided to go more into a like a darker neutral color it's called redent point and it is a warm earthy hue so and then of course they have recommendations for you here too as well on the palette and as you can see if the color is not just for your wall it can also be used as your kitchen color i'm seeing more and more kitchens being painted unusual colors not use standards that you see and you've been seeing for the last 20 or 30 years and of course you can use it to paint furniture as well so some quick suggestions on how do we test and try painting besides the fact of, of course of getting sample containers you can also use the technology and analyze your colors or what the, your space is going to look like online as you know our favorite visualizer from sherman williams where you can upload a picture of your own space and try on different colors i love it and you can do it with any any room of your house including the exterior as well even the patio so give that a try peel and stick uh, paint samples are amazing if you don't want to actually paint your walls you can actually get these are think of these are like sticky notes that you can put on the wall in each different room of your house to see if the color of your choice is actually going to look good so i think it's an amazing technology to just kind of you know give it a try and see what happens right if you don't like the color you you didn't do anything with the wall you just peel it off and then you go on your way so with painting just a couple of things for you to remember is that depending on the room that you're going to be painting depending on that project you that you want to embark in you want to make sure that you have the correct finish for your paint it's very important for example for your bathrooms and your kitchens you want to have paint that is specifically made for those two rooms because it is high moisture 
And you want to make sure that the paint that you get is going to be mold resistant and it's also going to be washable, right? So you may want to uh, kind of gravitate towards eggshell and satin. If you want to do trim and doors, you want to do semi-gloss and gloss. And uh, if you have walls that are uneven and you're trying to make them look as polished and as, um, as smooth as possible, then you may want to go in direction of flat. So the first project with, that we are going to talk about with painting is your front door, right? Sometimes it is one of the easiest things that you can accomplish in one weekend. It is the least expensive way for you to dress up your exterior. And as you can see, I gave you some examples and I'm inviting you today to get really, really out there. And instead of picking your traditional white or black, why don't you go with color? Look at these doors. Don't they look amazing? The purple door is actually a client of mine. Her favorite color is purple. And she moved out of community where there were actually restrictions on the colors and what you can do with the exterior. So she was super thrilled. And she's like, hey, Olga, I think I'm thinking about painting my front door purple. I said, Stephanie. I said, go to town. I love that idea. And then when the, you know, the final project was done, she sent me the picture and I've seen the door since because I went to her housewarming party. And this is the purple door she's got. And she actually has some more purple accents in her house pretty much everywhere. She has her backsplash purple because that's her color and that's what makes her happy. So think about the colors that maybe make her make you happy that when you pull up to your own home, you're going to smile because you're going to look at your door or your shutters or something else. And you're going to just smile and say, this makes me happy. So decide on what that looks like to you and then go to town. So make sure that you have exterior weather paint. And then you can also express your style with hardware, with lighting, as well as flowers. So here are some suggestions here on the befores and afters. It is not expensive. It can definitely be done in the weekend. And I promise you it's going to bring a smile to your face. You can also paint your staircase. And there's lots and lots of examples that we are loving that we're seeing now. Paint is your friend. So what we're seeing is some of the old things is your oak railing. And there's lots of different ways that you can do that. You can do it in one color, you can do it in two colors, but it is again, one of the easiest ways for you to dress up your entryway. If that is the focal point when you're coming to the house, or if you wanted to take it one step further, maybe instead of actually painting, if it's beyond that, you can always replace it with some metal pieces as well and to really make a statement. And of course, the steps, if you wanted to do something really fun and you don't want to use the carpet or you don't want to have the little pads anymore, you can paint your wood steps as long as they're in good shape or maybe you need to get some of those things ready. And you can also have some really fun ideas, make them all one color or maybe you can do uh, top one color and then the back of it is white or potentially even something different too. Countertops. Yes, you can absolutely also paint your countertops. It's one of the best ways for you to save money and yet dress up your countertop. Uh, you know, if you are, were thinking about that you were looking to have the look of a marble or granite, you can imagine if you have a formica or something, uh, you know, something, uh, uh, another material right now, those stones do cost a lot of money, although the pricing has gone down significantly in the last three to four years. So it may be worth it for you to check it out and see depending on the size of your kitchen. However, if that is not in your budget and your current countertop is in good shape, Gianni Countertop Paint Kit is only about $80 and you can find it on Amazon. I did look it up. Uh, rust -Oleum also has it if you wanted to find it in Home Depot or Lowe's. Yet, look, they have like three or four different colors. You can go from light to all the way dark, depending on the color of your cabinets. And it's really going to refresh your countertop. So see if that is an option for you. So the next step is let's talk about your kitchen cabinets. I know I mentioned it to you earlier, but painting cabinetry in your home is one of the easiest and the best ways for you to dress up the look and what you currently have if those things are in good shape. If you have a kitchen 
cabinets maybe from you know 50s and 60s a lot of the times those cabinets are solid wood they don't make them like that anymore today if you cabinet trees from 1980s and it's oak it is absolutely an amazing starting point for you to go to town and have fun with paint companies today make special paint for kitchen cabinets it is more durable because you're constantly gonna to be touching your cabinets, it has to withstand the heat and um, the cooking vapors and uh, you know the grease and so forth. So make sure that you use the, the correct paint for the cabinets. But I have some examples here for you on, you know, if you were to go the direction of painting things, you can really have some, a lot of fun. A lot of people are painting their vanity uh, cabinets if they're in good shape. You can go either something to really dark and make a really nice classy statement, whether the cabinets are black or maybe they're really dark coffee, like dark brown. If you're trying to brighten up the space and make it look nice and clean and classic and increased visual space, my suggestion is go to white either white or to light gray, which is some other pastel colors. And look, you can even have two different colors. Top cabinets can be one color, usually lighter, and the bottom cabinets can be darker. Nobody said that you can't have two colors in your kitchen. So decide what you think kind of makes sense to you. And then what you can do is if you're not sure, you can take a picture like this of your current kitchen, upload it to Sherman Williams Visualizer and then play with colors and see what looks good. And that will kind of help you make a decision and give you a um, direction that you may want to go to. Another suggestion I have is a couple of things that you can do in the kitchen if you are on a really tight budget. Uh, number one, if you have a balance above your kitchen sink it's really dating your kitchen so my suggestion to you which is easy to do just go ahead and remove it if you have a light you can actually swap it out for a pendant or for something more modern and that's going to dress up your kitchen and the second item would be you can always swap out your your uh, your faucet that's another update as well as work on getting your handles and knobs updated as well Okay, and if you don't have any knobs, that is another great way for you to update your kitchen cabinets is just to dress them up. And it's also going to save your cabinets as well because you're not gonna be touching the wood constantly with your hands. Let's head into the other parts of your house. And um, I want to share a trick with you that I have learned actually from interior decorators that do new construction. And I don't know where all of us learned how to hang curtains. And tell me if this resonates with you. But I think a lot of us, like even, you know, if you look around the windows that you currently have, and that's what I'm kind of encouraging you to do is a lot of us for same, you know, we always say, well, I'm just going to hang the rod right by above the frame. And I'm just going to frame on my window with these curtains and because that's just what I think I know how to do. Well, in reality, the best way to do this is actually go as high as possible as you can towards the ceiling. And then you try to go as wide as possible around your window. And what that does, it visually creates more space. That's, and I've tested this, I've seen clients do this and I see it in design magazines, as well as new construction all the time. If you look at the photos here, these are actual photos from um, actual houses. You go as high as you can, and the length of the curtains makes the whole room look taller and bigger. And as you can see here as well, this is in the new construction house. You go as high as possible and you make them look as tall as possible. So a couple of things just to kind of keep in mind. 10 inches as you can go high as high as you can, but at least 10 inches and then 13 inches on the side. So if you really want to kind of play around with it, remove your current current uh, current curtains and then take pictures <coughs> of what they look like before and then have someone hold them and then you look at it and then take pictures. And I can guarantee you, you will see some really, really interesting results. It could be just as simple as just moving the, cur the, the curtains that you have now to make your whole room look bigger. <coughs> All right. 
let's head into another project that you can paint. And that is your light fixtures. Rust-Oleum, as a lot of you know, is one of my favorite brands. And you can paint just about anything. So before you throw away some of your fixtures and your light fixtures and maybe, maybe your faucets that are reminding you of how old the house is, let's try paint them. I have seen people paint registers, their uh, lamp base, their toilet and towel holders, their light fixtures. I've seen people paint faucets. And my suggestion to you, it's a lot cheaper to paint it and see how it looks than spending money on getting it replaced, which you can always do. So my recommendation to you is Let's see if we can paint it and let's see how it looks, the befores and afters, and you might just be surprised. You can also do the same thing with your current ceiling fan. You know, this is something that I keep thinking about doing in my own house because my own ceiling fan is white in my master bedroom, yet the actual hardware pieces that my, like the blades sit on and like these metal pieces around here are gold. And it's definitely dating the house. And I love my ceiling fan. And I don't want to replace it because it's completely silent. And that's what I love about it. It's completely silent. And that's what I love because I like when I sleep, I like to be completely silent. So uh, one of these days, probably around springtime, I might just try this and see if I can spray paint it and kind of bring my white ceiling fan into the century. So next, let's just talk about some small projects that you can embark on that is not that are not going to cost you a lot of money, yet may make a difference. If you live in older homes, I think this is something especially that can resonate with you because in older homes, we don't have a lot of space. There's not a lot of closet space. There's not a lot of pantry space in the kitchen. And we kind of, you know, wiggle around and we work with what we got. So in some cases, it may make sense for you to repurpose some of the closets into things and spaces that you need more than the closet, right? You may want to sacrifice your closet for something that is more important to you, right? It could be your uh, ready place for you to head out before you go out, right? Because if you don't have somewhere to sit for your kids to kind of get ready to go outside, it could be that you need place to actually hang your coats because you don't have a coat closet when you enter the door. So think about the current space that you have and what are some of the things that you truly need and see if you can repurpose your current space for those more desirable things that you might be looking for. So that's one of your homework from this workshop. Next, let's look at some other ways that you can uh, just use what you have. And I loved doing this. I actually reupholstered furniture myself. So in the beginning of my marriage, when my husband and I did not have a lot of money and we started our life together, we did not have a lot of money to buy for furniture in our new home. And a friends of ours were actually, uh, well, it's actually friends of our parents were selling their house and they did not want to take any of the furniture. So before they completely moved out, they told us, go through the house and see if there's anything that you need. So of course we were super happy because we didn't have to pay for anything. We just had to transport everything. So we got a dining room set. And one of the things that I wanted to do was reupholster the seats because they were pretty worn out. However, the wood, the furniture itself was still in good shape. So my mom and I went out and we purchased the fabric that I liked. And then we cut that fabric to fit. And then literally you take off the top of your chair, you know, the seat, and then you flip it over and then you put the fabric down and you just staple everything. It was one of the easiest projects that we could have done. It a major, it, yet it made a huge impact. And I've had that furniture for quite a while until it was time to move from the, from that home that we were in. Actually, we moved when our, I was pregnant with our first daughter. So that furniture has lasted us for quite a while, but reupholstering furniture is one of the easiest. And I think the funnest projects that you can possibly do to keep something that maybe is, you know, has was passed down to you from family or something that is important to you that you don't want to get rid of, yet you want to have like a little bit of a refresh look to it. Uh, peel and stick backsplash. So 
This is something that is fun that we're seeing quite often. And you can actually use these peel and stick tiles, not just on the backsplash, but you can do them in on the bathroom floors. So what we can do Okay, so what we can do is use this as an easy way if you don't have the budget to actually get regular tile, or if you are in the rental situation, the landlord gave you permission, you can dress up the current space that you have. You can use it in the kitchens and you can also use it in the bathrooms. And one of the best suggestions that I can give you, and a lot of people ask me, Olga, what do you suggest as a backsplash idea? Subway tile, you can never go wrong. Absolutely. It's one of the easiest things you can do because it's already kind of lined up for you. As you can see, it's like uh, a few pictures on the bottom, but you can pick up these tiles at Walmart. I've seen them, of course, on Amazon and Home Depot, as well as Lowe's. And they're really, really easy to work with. And here is, uh, of course, your bathroom tile as well, right? So it's, uh, it's it, you, you just cut it, you peel it off. You just have to make sure that you prep the current floor. Yet, especially these designs that are really popular right now, they're like white tiles with either gray or light blue designs. So if you have like a white or maybe gray kit, uh, bathroom, and of course you can paint your cabinets gray to kind of fit your mood and your style. It really is going to dress up your bathroom. And if you are thinking about painting your bathroom, yes, you absolutely can do that. Uh, it is a special paint that you're going to need for your tub and your surround. And you know, if you have like, like tile finishes, it's called reglazing. Uh, rust -Oleum does make a product for it. Uh, you just have to be very careful about reading instructions and following them to a T because the paint that is used for the bathrooms is more of a epoxy, which is a special type of paint and it has to be done right. All right, let's keep going with our bathrooms. And here, if your bathroom overall looks great and you just want to maximize the space and do some things, number one, you can always dress up and update your, uh, your lighting as well as your faucets and your handles, just like you would in the kitchen. And then think about the current space that you have. I think a lot of us waste so much space in our bathrooms because we don't realize that we can use the doors, whether it's the doors to the actual bathroom or the doors to our vanities. The space below in our vanity is definitely not used well because we kind of just put stuff at the bottom. Yet, if we really wanted to, we could use the air all the way to the top in our vanity cabinet. And then think about maybe using some floating shelves above your toilet and what you can do with them, especially if you have a very small bathroom with no storage on, maybe you can even hang a cabinet in here if you don't want to display things, but you want to keep them covered. Project number nine is barn style doors. Those are definitely still in and I love them and I recommend them, especially for tight spaces. If you don't have a way for the door to kind of swing out, sometimes clients don't have a way for even doors to bifold, right? Where they can fold in half. This is where a barn style door, which is basically something for you to be used as a door. And I've seen some really creative ways of using the different products. And you just need the hardware for that door to kind of slide back and forth. So think about if this is something that you can do to update and upgrade your current space because you can even use a door as an accent piece. It doesn't have to be a wall. It, it can be a door. The door can be painted a favorite pop color for you to dress up a room. Garage, a few simple things that you can do here. So number one, you can purchase magnets that look like handles and hinges and windows and dress up your garage this way. I found household essentials kit right on Amazon. It's super inexpensive. And because the garage doors are metal, which means that they're magnetized, that means that these magnets are going to be going right on and look how pretty the door is going to look. So that's option number one. And number two, if you wanted to get your floor 
of the garage, all cleaned up and dressing. You know, there's of course epoxy, a special paint that is being sold for your garage door to make you look clean and fresh. And as you can see my trend going in the painting directions, this is also something that you can do. So this is of course, is probably a project that is gonna take you more than a weekend, depending on how, crowded your garage is which because you have to pull everything out all your stuff including your vehicles and then you have to clean the floor then you have to paint it and you have to wait for it to dry so places for buying all this fun stuff and kind of to look for ideas because I'm, I'm not sure about you guys but I need some ideas first to kind of tell me okay this is the setup or this is the trend and then I can take that and say okay this is how I can make it mine this is what speaks to me and this is what's going to make me happy our favorite places to go and look for things if you want to go and touch things or get some samples are of course Home Depot and Lowe's floor decor uh, has a couple of stores depending on where you are in a couple of different states what i love about those stores is everything that you see is going to be in stock so you can take a piece of sample of this and then go to the flooring department and see if the colors match you can kind of take pieces and walk around the whole store and see if your idea is going to work together Wayfair is a dangerous, dangerous website because they have a ton of different things. They all come in different colors and choices, and then it can get delivered to your home a lot of the times for free shipping. Lamps Plus Open Box is another great website. I found some really nice lamps there. Overstock, Amazon, eBay for some other suggestions. And if you're looking for some ideas on what may speak to you, you can head over to house with double Z's at the end. That's where I get a lot of my ideas as I scroll through and then I might just screenshot them for you know, sharing with you or working on some of my other future workshops and of course on Pinterest as well. So here is where I would suggest you, you kind of head over next. If you decided on some projects that you want to work on and it's not something that you want to handle yourself, here are some recommendations for you to finding a contractor. I actually just did a video on um, uh, helping you finding a good contractor. So you may want to head over to my YouTube channel and take a look at it. It's the last video that we just posted last week. So take a look at that one. But overall, here are some tips for you. So number one, the best time to hire a contractor and do some of your projects is going to be late fall and winter. That's when the contractors are the least busy. And that's when they're actually going to call you back. Don't be surprised when good contractor sometimes does not return your phone call. It is very frustrating, but they're just so slammed and busy with projects. They don't need you right now. Okay. But it doesn't mean they're not going to need you in the fall and winter when maybe they're slow on their projects. Number two, absolutely ask for recommendations. You can reach out to us. That's where our concierge service comes in to, to you. A local next door app, local Facebook group. Sometimes we head over there to see if there's any contractors that are being recommended by different people. Fans, or friends and family, of course. And also websites like Thumbtack and Angie's List. As you can see, I put them at the bottom because sometimes contractors will pay to be on their list and also they will be paid to be sponsored and boosted up higher on their search list. Next, obtain a few quotes. This way you can see if the cost of your projects is about the same along the border, then you know that it is the right price. But until you obtain and you have a few quotes, you're not going to know what the pricing is going to be like. And if it's something that's affordable to you, or maybe you need to wait up and save some money. Next, Make sure that you verify the contractor that you may kind of choose or lean towards. Please verify that they are currently licensed and insured. And you can do that on every state's website. And I have the websites here listed for you for New Jersey and Pennsylvania. You wanna make sure that they are licensed and that they're insured. This way, if something happens on the job at your house, you are going to be protected because they have their own insurance. And just be prepared. The prices they're going to quote you are probably going to be higher than what you thought is fair. 
And that's because of what I mentioned to you in the beginning, the prices for labor and materials have gone up drastically in the last few years. And also be prepared to wait for your project. Depending on how busy the contractor is, they may not be able to fit you in for a few months. So don't think that this is something that you're gonna be able to accomplish in the next few weeks. However, the best things come to those that are patient and they can wait. So this is what I have to share with you. I hope that I gave you some really good ideas and thoughts. Our upcoming workshop schedule is packed and we have quite a few things already planned out for the first quarter. So please check us out on Live with Olga website and sign up for as many as you want and join us again because we are updating everything that we have for next year. So that way we can bring you fresh content and fresh ideas. And so you don't miss anything. Make sure you head over to our YouTube channel where all of our workshops are recorded so that way you can rewatch them from the comfort of your home again and again to kind of get motivated and then have some other ideas and suggestions for yourselves and we are at Penn Jersey Living with Olga and so that way you don't miss any videos please subscribe this way you will also be notified next time when a new video pops up and of course as you're working on your projects please share with us your before and after pictures we we love to see them and I'm always here to help you kind of make a decision on what projects make the most sense and going to bring you the biggest return on your investment. And of course, I would love to connect with you. Most of the time, I am hanging out on Facebook and you can find me there. So that's what I have to share with you. So at this time, let me just take a look and see at what other questions that we have maybe that I haven't answered yet. And you are welcome to pop in. And then uh, let us know if there's any projects that you're currently working on. I'm always excited to see them. Or if you have any questions that I haven't answered. Okay. I live in a one-bedroom single-story townhouse, and I am an addicted plantaholic. My place is bright and open living room lounge kitchen and dining and my bedroom due to the permanent setup uh pull down set set pull up and down however as the double windows are open to everyone they remain closed i had thought of using window film but not a hundred percent sure people sure it will stop people peeking in i would be grateful for any suggestions i've seen the privacy film that we also actually recommend for like the bathroom windows and for the entry doors. I've seen some really, really fun designs on Amazon where it's still a thin film, yet it gives you the privacy, yet it looks really pretty. They had some really interesting designs and um, some of them can be reflective with the sun, which was really fun. So I would suggest heading there and kind of seeing some different options that are offered. Hi. Linda, what finish should I use for an exterior entry door? You have a purple door now. Okay, and you're ready to go back. You know what? Sometimes you can... the our our fun colors maybe we get tired of right and then we say okay i'm ready to go back to something more neutral until i decide i want to do what i want to do next right yeah okay good okay <laughs> and what finish should i use for an entry door uh, exterior exterior i believe that a lot of them are actually yellow satin because you 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 want that some you want a finish that is washable this way you can go back and wipe it down Okay, I thought because I thought I was reading semi gloss or high gloss would be better or if you like that really, really glossy color, mm -hmm. you can I would go to Home Depot or Lowe's and see how it's going to look like if you really like that shiny look you can. Okay, but yeah. satin is your recommendation. That's good. I, ne I never thought of that. Mm -hmm. it's it's a little bit softer it, it's like okay. more kind of plush looking is probably okay, the best you. way i can suggest to you yeah thank you okay i'm not sure who iphone is but uh it, it says i swapped out my kitchen sink faucet last month and i love the new look it gave my sink and kitchen exactly a hundred percent it's amazing how the little things can make a difference 
A hundred percent. Yes. All right, and then we have the upcoming workshop schedule here posted in the chat that you can see. And of course the link to our YouTube channel. All right, anybody else has anything else that they may want to add or ask? I hope that you found this helpful and that kind of you know energized you and gave you some awesome ideas for you to plan out for next year. I have another question. Um, mm -hmm. When you were doing the cabinets, I have um, my cabinets, I guess, are about 28 years old. And I got them. I was like one of the first people that did the cherry, the dark cherry color. Mm -hmm. And I still really like it. Like I've had other, you know, oak and white. And I want to keep that. And I'm, and I'm, it might be trending old. What is your opinion on that? If it still makes you happy, then absolutely keep it. Okay. Right. If if you were not happy with the colors because it would kind of give you a low energy when you walk into the kitchen, then maybe it's time to change it. But if it still makes you happy after all this time, then absolutely. Okay. And that's the same. That's the same feeling I have. I still have all white appliances, and I'm actually in the process of shopping for a new stove because mine is literally falling apart. And my girls are like, okay, mom, I think it's time. So I'm ready for the new stove. But as you can imagine, shopping for white stove, it's pointless for me to go into the store because nobody's pretty much selling white stoves anymore. And I do not want stainless steel because I love the color. I love white. White is timeless. It's clean. So white still makes me happy. So I'm not going to stainless steel. I'm still going to have white. So if cherry cabinets make you happy, then keep them. <laughs> okay. 100 all right well everybody if that is all thank you so much for joining me on this thursday morning we hope you have a wonderful rest of the week have a fun celebratory weekend linda and me <laughs> thank you and we hope to see you again maybe next week and then um have a great uh, holiday season if we don't Thank you so much for joining me. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.